Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's the brain of the mainframe here now, Scott with Pop XP. And join me for always for our crowdfunding comics series. The most amazing Frank you'll ever meet. Mr. Mink, a fr amazing Frank. What? Hey. What are you doing, man? You <laughs> pretended to be frozen. You tricked me. Uh, You're a tricker, bro. You're sneaky, a tricker. Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, Frank. What's going no. on, brother? We got an, our, our crowdfunding comics yes, episode we do. this week. Yes. I'm excited. Great, great selection again, Frank. Yeah. You're really pulling them in. Like a fisherman, what kind of worms are you using on that hook, huh? Bazookas. Oh, nice, nice. Like bazooka chewing. Oh, bazo oh, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing there. But man, I gotta say, uh, the guest we have on tonight, um, I saw his first book back in 2019, thought it was really cool. Yeah, don't know why we didn't have him on the show, but now we do have him on the show. And uh, please, everyone, welcome Michael Derrick, uh, with the abductables two. Michael, how are we doing tonight? Doing good. Thanks for uh, having me on your show. I appreciate it. Hey, man. Anytime. So happy to have you on. Like I was telling you, uh, you know, before we started uh, recording, you know, I, I, I've seen I'm familiar with your work. I saw the first book. Um, I love the interiors of the book. I love the style of what you do. But, you know, obviously, this is our first time getting to meet and talk. So, I mean, if you don't mind, tell me a little about yourself. How did you get into comics? Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, not too surprising. I was a fan of comic books ever since I was a kid, um, you know, by uh, even even before I got into comics, you know, uh, I grew up in the 90s. So uh, I, I was really into like the superhero stuff mostly came from the animated side of things, you know, the Batman animated series, X-Men animated mm -hmm. series. Um, but it wasn't until I was like eight years old that I really got into comics specifically. And that was uh, mostly because... Uh, through my cousin, uh, he was a huge comic book collector, um, and I, you know, he his room was literally filled with stacks of comic books, and that that just like, and and remember this was the '90s, so it, the art just kind of blew my mind back then because that was like kind of the edgy, uh, you know, image mm -hmm. comics phase with Spawn and stuff like that, and it was just so like even. Like even, that was back then when uh, you could still buy comics in like the grocery store and they'd have like, you know, yeah. uh, I remember seeing like cable like on the spinner rack and he, it just looked all like violent and crazy. It was like it really, really cool stuff back then. So that, that, that was kind of my era that I got into it. Um, and uh, I, I kind of always wanted to be a writer in one form or another, um, you know, whether it was comics or novels or you know, at one point I was like, I'm going to be a screenwriter. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I always, for some reason, I always come back to comics as like, that's that's kind of the medium that I really want to tell my stories in. And um, so, yeah, uh, in uh, about three years ago, I decided to really start pursuing it um, in earnest. Um, I, I had done some sub submission work here and there. Um but I, yeah, 2018, it was like, okay, I'm really going to like put my all into this. And so I started, uh, I actually started doing my own web comics initially. Um, because, uh, you know, for people who don't know, I'm, I'm a writer, not an artist, uh, technically though I did draw my uh, first web comics and that was mostly out of necessity because, you know, anybody who wants to be a comic writer knows that it could be, uh, kind of difficult to hook up with an artist sometimes, especially if you don't have that much money, because obviously that's the best way to, to get an artist is just to uh, offer them boatloads of money. Um, but, you know, just starting out and uh, not really having a name for myself, I was like, you know what, even if my drawings aren't that good, um, at least I'll be able to get my stories out there. And that actually worked out pretty well because, um, you know, I, I had something to show for myself and that was kind of my way into the community to where I could actually start hooking up with artists and like sending them my ideas and uh, yeah, going from there. And uh, yeah. So as a, as a comic book writer, who like, where do you draw your inspiration from? Oh man. Um, it, it, I, I would call my inspirations kind of a weird mixture of like the, um, the aforementioned like nineties edgelord comics. And then like, the eighties British invasion stuff from like Alan Moore and Grant Morrison. Mm -hmm. And then, um, 
maybe a little bit mix of, uh, you know, I'm a big MAGA fan. Um, so I'm sure that uh, influences my work to a larger degree than I probably even realize. Um, so yeah, kind of a, kind of a blend of all those things. Um, but yeah, pr- honestly, probably more on the writer side of things. I'm probably more influenced by like, like the eighties British invasion guys. Like um, I'm a big Garth Ennis fan. Um, oh, me too, me too. Uh, yeah. His, uh, his kind of mix of like humor and drama, like that really appeals to me. Like, um, I like that. I like the mix of like his, sen- his dark sense of humor, but then when he gets serious, like he can tell a really like mature story and that, that, that I don't know, that, that, that's kind of, uh, he's always been kind of my favorite writer in that regard. Nice. So with these inspirations you, you've had, uh, you know, growing up and then, you know, building, uh, I guess, trying to build your dreams and aspiring for, for what you're trying to do in the comic industry, writing and all that stuff. Uh, how did you come up with uh, the current series that you have now on um, Indiegogo? You know, how did the abductables come to be? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the abductables is absolutely tied into like my origin story in a way, because, you know, like I said, I had, um, I had initially started, you know, making my own web comics and then transitioned, uh, into just being a writer and working with artists. Um, Mm -hmm. The first time I actually worked with an artist on a collaboration, we, uh, you know, I reached out to an artist who uh, we did a 10 page horror story together. And then I just posted that on my blog for free. So that was another kind of way to like show people, Hey, this is what I'm, you know, doing as a writer. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from there, um, I actually, I pitched the abductables, which was, uh, you know, initially, it, it was a concept I had had for a few years, but, uh, you know, when, uh, when I really started building my presence, um, I reached out to the artist, uh, for abductables, Ibai Canales, who I was a big fan of his work. He was kind of popping up in the uh, crowdfunding scene. This was, uh, around the time that, uh, Iron Sights, uh, launched from Richard C. Meyer. And that was like a big crowdfunding, um, uh, campaign at the time. And I, and I was a real big fan of uh, Canalis' style. So I, I literally just reached out to him on Twitter and I was like, hey, man, would you want to collaborate? And I sent him the first eight pages of the abductable script. And uh, he, he got back to me like right away. And we it, it was really easy. We just started uh, working together. Um, as, uh, as you can see uh, from the artwork, Canalis has a very humorous uh, style, very exaggerated comedic style. And it, it really fits the material for the abductables perfectly because you know, when I mentioned I like to blend humor and action and drama, I mean, this is what The Abductables is all about. It's a, I describe it as a sci-fi action comedy. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it's definitely got a very unique tone that I think uh, appeals to people. And uh, yeah, this was, uh, this is uh, The Abductables too. This is the sequel to that first, uh, my, cur- my first crowdfunding effort back all the way back in 2019, uh, which feels like a lifetime ago. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, let's check out your campaign video. That was an awesome video. 
I like the close up <laughs> and the panning of your interiors. <clears throat> the, the the whole style of the book is is so unique. I mean, tell us a bit about the uh, tells me tell me a little bit more about your artist. Yeah, so uh, you know, Ebai Canales, uh, for people who don't know, uh, like I mentioned, I think his probably his highest profile book would be Iron Sights, um, which is like a kind of a Western crime book, I guess you could call it. Um, but really, I think where he thrives is with the exaggerated kind of over the top stuff that we're doing here with the abductables. Um, he's a he, he's an artist from Spain. So uh, people do kind of describe him as having like that kind of European style. Um, but to me, yeah, he's just a very, uh, very unique. I wouldn't even know really how to describe him um, other than, you know, the thing about the abductables is because it is a sci-fi action comedy, it's really important to have an artist who can sell the, the, the jokes, you know, the comedy, yeah. the comedic yeah. aspects. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this series would work at all uh, with any other artist because, I mean, he could really sell the humor. And most importantly, and what I really value in an artist is he could, he can, you know, he, he's good at the character acting. Like he can convey the emotions on their faces and really, uh, you know, I don't even you know, even if we didn't have any lettering, I feel like people could, you know, kind of get an idea of what was going on because uh, he's just that good. So, yeah, I'm really, uh, really happy to work with him again. You know, obviously we worked together the first time on the first book in 2019 and now we're uh, getting the team back together. And uh, yeah, so the first, uh, the first abductables was black and white, um, 52 pages and uh, this time around for the sequel, it's all about going bigger and better. So we're doing 60 pages full color. And uh, Canalis is doing the uh, color work himself as well as the artwork. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it's all about expanding that initial concept and uh, taking it as far as we can. Yeah. I, and I mean, I, I like the whole color scheme of the of the second issue. Um, I think it's incredible because like even with the black and white, you can tell like with some of the filters and, and effects that are on it. And you've transitioned that really to your color pages and it gives it almost like a like like you kind of feel sorry i'm scrolling really fast but you kind of yeah. feel like you're in outer space because there's almost like a an alien haze to the pages yes i'm glad you said that because that's exactly what we were going for um you know the uh the initial concept of the abductables was you know, very, very simple, high concept, uh, aliens abduct the wrong man. And, uh, he, uh, he goes full John wick on them and the, on the spaceship. Uh, it basically, uh, an alien abduction turned into a 1980s action movie with this big hulking dude who looks like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, uh, kicking all their alien asses. And then, uh, you know, we go from there and things just get even weirder. Um, and, in, and the second book, you know, we kind of flip that dynamic to where now this, uh, this dude who is like the, the most badass man in the galaxy who uh, we just call the abductee. He's actually working for the gray aliens to fight an even greater threat. Um, and so because we're kind of going from that initial uh, spaceship setting to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, opening up the entire galaxy and visiting all these different planets and seeing all these different alien races. It, it's almost like uh, in wizard of Oz when Dorothy, like, you know, when she's in Kansas, it's all in black and white. But then when she goes to Oz, it, it goes to full color. So that's kind of what we're going for uh, with uh, his adventures in space, where it's just all of a sudden it's just popping full color. And uh, it's like a, like a brand new world. And, uh, you know, like I said, bigger and better. Yeah, no, it definitely shows. And it's such a unique style that like you do, like you, you feel like you're going off in this adventure that is literally in outer space. And mm -hmm. I can see it. I can see the, you know, the physical comedic uh, humor on the faces of the, in the character design and how he's illustrating his panels um, and with his sequential art uh, without reading it. I can tell you that I'm probably going to laugh when I do actually read this book because I can convey it. I can already tell like where the humor is just by looking at the panels, which is mm -hmm. really cool. And that's, that is very hard to do as an artist. Um, so I definitely see what you're talking about there uh, with, with canals and his work. Um, again, man, this book is gorgeous. I think this is, this is great. Now, where, where are you going with this? Is this a series? Are you going to continue this on? Um, how far does this, this going to go? Um, so the, the initial adductables was really only conceived as a one shot. And, uh, for people who did read that first book, it had a definitive ending. Um, but somewhere along the production of the first book, I had the, 
I had a really great idea for the sequel, which you see here. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I couldn't resist it. And, you know, it, I, I, I shamelessly call it a, the uh, abductable is a cult classic comic because, you know, obviously it wasn't the initial campaign wasn't like one of these big six figure things, but you know, we, we got funded. We did fairly well. We, we did very well, honestly, for a new creator, um, raise about uh, 8,000 or 7,000 something, um, which isn't bad for, you know, no name guy, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, this first project, but it was so well received and, you know, people really did. And, you know, they, they said, we got so many people telling us it was their favorite crowdfunded book. So, you know, I, I call it a cult classic comic and, uh, you know, uh, as far as, um, you know, the, the future of the franchise, uh, the abductables too, much like the first one has a very definitive ending. It's very self-contained and honestly, people could jump right into it without having read the first one if they want, though, obviously they would, they would get more out of it if they read both. Um, and, and we do have both, uh, for sale if people did want to get both copies. Um, but, uh, yeah, I do have an idea for a third book if there's a demand for it. But at that point, that would be the end of the of the series yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, oh, definitely, uh, I, man. I have to say, this is a gorgeous book. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about it. Um, I am definitely going to back this myself because I, I love it. I'm, you know, I didn't back the first one, which I regret. Um, but I will probably hit that tier where I can get the, a copy of the first one as well. Um, cause I really do, man. I, I love this sci-fi stuff is like really my thing. Uh, you know, sci like real sci-fi, you know, comics and then like straight up traditional superhero books is what I love. And this looks so cool. And I know you will get funded. You have six days to go. So all you viewers out there that are watching, there's six days to go. It is March 3rd, 2021. Right. So six days, get it going, share it on your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitch, uh, whatever you're using. I don't know your Patreon, your your streams, your only fans. I don't know what you're doing <laughs> out there, people, but help spread the word of the abductables to ridiculous. Yes, please do. And yeah, you know, we do have six days left. We we already did our 30 day extension. So there, we, we don't have any more uh, extensions. Uh, we are on a fixed goal. So. Worst case scenario, if we didn't get funded, everybody would get uh, refunded by Indiegogo. But honestly, we're so close. I think we could really pull it off. I think um, you can do it. Yeah. You know, I think uh, we're at, what, 86? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, 86 percent. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, painfully close. So I think we can definitely pull it off in this uh, final week. And uh, yeah, that, that was another, uh, you know, not only... I wouldn't have done this if uh, I wouldn't have done the sequel if I didn't have a good idea for it. But I think I was also kind of encouraged by because the first book was so well received mm -hmm. and uh, in the uh, uh, you know, we had so many people because this is uh, this is actually my third crowdfunding campaign. Um, I did a book after the first abductable is a superhero book called Grayscale, which was basically about a, a superhero who controls the power of karma. So, and that funded successfully as well. But in the meantime, while that was going on, so many people had uh, reached out to me saying, Hey, I did miss out on the first deductibles. Are you ever going to put it up for sale? Because we, we never uh, sold it on a secondary market. Mm -hmm. The only way you could ever have gotten the first deductibles was through Indiegogo. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time, uh, you know, people who did miss out on that original campaign are able to, to get that uh, first book. So. Awesome. So there you awesome. have it. You can start off right at the beginning or, you know, you can pick up on the second, whichever you prefer. Mike, Michael, thank you so much for coming on uh, Crowdfunding Comics. Great book, great campaign. Keep us in the loop. Uh, you well, know, if anything else you have going on, myself and Frank will continue to push this over the next six days as much as we can uh, on our social media outlets for you. I know you'll get funded. Uh, like I said, I will definitely back this again, uh, back this book. Um, again, I'm going to do that tier so I can start off with issue one since I didn't get it on the first go around. So, oh, Michael, thank so thanks so much for joining us, everyone. If you like what we're doing here on Crowdfunding Comics on the Pop XP Network, please click that subscribe button, smash that bell. This way you get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. Everyone, thank you so much. Continue supporting your indie creators, and we will see you on the next one. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.